supported by the earth's strong, firm crust. We build our homes to the fields, plant our gardens and orchards. When we turn from self and seek to be aware, we will find holy light in human faces and blossoms, bird songs, and sky. Then earth is truly our home, and we are one with earth's creatures, parents of earth's children to be. From Alice Berry. I have lots of announcements today, and I'll do them quickly. Um, so I, last, last week, I think, sometime, I started to locate, locate us in the world. So today I want to remind you of Martin Luther. How many people know who Martin Luther, not Martin Luther the King, Martin Luther. Well, t um, today was the day he was declared an outlaw and a heretic. Um, and it was done by the Edicts of the Worms, and that was in 1521. Martin Luther is one of my favorite people because what he said was, why do we have to pay indulgence to priests to have them pray for us? He said, that is, that is madness, that we should be able to ask what we need um, and not need um, an intermediary. And so he was interested in getting folks out of purgatory, preventing people from going to purgatory, and he was called a heretic as a result of it. His word spread because of what? What do you think might have done it? It's called the Gutenberg Printing Press. Rachel Carson, you all know her? Yeah. Um, this is her birthday, May, May 27th. Um, we love the earth in part because of Rachel Carlson's writings. Today, um, May 27th, is also the birthday of suffragist and abolitionist Julia Ward Howe. Who's that? Oh, music people do not answer. She, she, she was born in New York City in 1819, and she wrote the lyrics to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. You all know, my, my eyes have been the glory. Yes. You know what else she was? A Unitarian Universalist. She hung out with Theodore Parker. Theodore Parker. Um, and William Lloyd Garrison. May 28th is also the day that President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act into law. It was in 1830. In 1823, the United States Supreme Court ruled that white settlers had the right of discovery, superseding the Indians' rights of occupancy. The Removal Act primarily affected five tribes, the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Creek, Chickasaw, and, um, oh boy, Seminoles, thank you, um, of Southeast United States. Approximately 100,000 people were forcibly marched thousands of miles, sometimes in chains, um, to lands west of the Mississippi. It is called the Trail of Tears. As many as 25% of, of that group's men, women, and children perished along the way. May 30th is the 102nd anniversary of the day that Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Lincoln, the Lincoln Memorial was dedicated in 1922. You understand the slip? Um, um, the structure, the Lincoln Memorial was, was modeled after the, the Parthenon. And one of the most famous events, there are actually are two in my mind, that took place um, at the Lincoln Memorial was, I have a dream. Marion Anderson, yes, yes. All right, 
in May 3rd to June 1st will mark the 103rd anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre in 1921. Do you all know what that is? Um, it is really one of those really bad. So for those of you who don't, um, mobs of white people went into Tulsa, um, into a part of the neighborhoods that was, was thriving. It was sort of black prosperity and killed people, destroyed the, um, the city, and, and it never rebounded. That's my, inter that's my national announcements. What are the local? Nope. In honor of those in recognition of the gifts and sacrifices Amen. Please stand for the affirmation, and again, you need to read in the um, order of service, because I moved some stuff. Ready? We believe. John Denver. How many of y'all know who John Denver is? The Spirit.
that? I don't know if you can. Because we are um, very busy in the back today making a um, special uh, Danish butter cookie bake sale. And we're my, I'm from Denmark, okay, so you can get some fresh made Danish butter cookies by an actual Danish baker today. Um, and we're doing that in uh, honor of our beloved Laura, who was our baking inspiration, the master of, of any kind of cookie. Um, and we'll also have some available for sale um, if you're interested in participating in um, our raising money for a special memorial for Laura. We're going to be building something extra nice for her. Um, so I wanted to re do a reading. My, my grandfather, um, this was his favorite um, thing to recite. I consider it a poem. Um, he was a major um, on D-Day and came in on the beaches in Normandy. Not the first row, not the second, but later ones who actually made it up on the beach. Um, and in the process, his, his, uh, as a major, he had a special bodyguard. His bodyguard was shot and um, died that day. And my grandfather got a bullet in his wrist that he kept in his wrist till his dying day. But um, we're all very proud of him and our family. So I wanted to read his, his favorite piece by Theodore Roosevelt. And many of you have heard it, and I think it's all children should hear it as well. It's very important piece here. It is not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the one who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. The credit belongs to the one who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his, her place shall never be among those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. So we sing the children out. Go now in For a long time, we've been doing um, Pima Sh Children's meditation. But because of Memorial Day and the Flower Communion, I changed it a bit today. Um, so now is the time in the service where we meditate. Please make yourself as comfortable as possible, taking in a centering breath a cleansing breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Letting go of all the stress and aggravation you've endured this week. Breathe in joy and breathe out love. I'm going to read to you the Meditation on Flower Communion, written by Reverend William B. Rice. I pray that on a day such as this, may a great change come upon us. The sounds of the media we have been hearing have been discordant. The sights we have been seeing have been violent. The words we have been reading and hearing have been hateful. And all this has been wearying, discouraging, and distracting. Breathe in, breathe out. 
There is war, both here and abroad. In our hearts, we had a dream of reconciliation, of love. And in our minds, we believed in community. And in our hearts, we hold healing. But this has been a sorry season of discontent, most difficult for wishes, visions, and dreams. Today is a new day, truly an hour of hope and joy and gladness. Let us be thankful for the persistence of flowers and open ourselves to their long wisdom. Often they grow in spite of terrible winters and miserable summers. And they grow for people who do not have a green thumb. Strange beauty greets us in, in, in unexpected places after, as if there is a particular grace that is stronger than our carelessness, indifference, and hate. But when we tend our gardens with love and care, the reward can be greater than the effort. It is most wise to combine flowers with the celebration of life. For flowers speak to us of wonders and glories yet to be, of hopes fulfilled, of lessons learned from our losses. We must tend to our gardens, our homes, our community with, patient, with patience, wisdom, and love. Now I invite you into silence, breathing in and breathing out, remembering both the majesty of flowers and the lessons learned taught by our loved ones about war, hate, and love. Come, let us be silent together. Come, let us be a healing community. for hymn number 1012, When I Am Frightened. It's in the Teal hymn book, hymn Wait a minute, stop. Do you hear what he's doing? <laughs> Let's not take that for granted. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess, yeah, it's my joy that my, my left arm is back. <laughs>
That sounded so nice. Good morning. It is very good and wonderful to be with you upstairs today. I, I'm told Frederick Douglass hung out here once. Aren't I lucky? Today we commemorate Memorial Day. Musa, how do you say that? Your sight. I learned that this morning. Um, it also seems right and fitting that we celebrate a flower communion today. The flower communion is both a joyful and solemn ceremony. It is a complicated ceremony that invites us to remember those who have come before and made enormous sacrifices and to lift up those around us who care deeply for them and who might be struggling for, with others, for others, holding all of them in our hearts with love. Whenever we perform a flower communion, we should remember Deepak Chopik and his wife, Maya. Reverend Chopik was a Unitarian, which later became Unitarian Universalist, who was killed in Dachau by Hitler because of his beliefs beliefs that are similar to ours. Celebrating Memorial Day, however, can be challenging. It is sometimes a lightning rod for feelings. Although it is intended to be a day to mourn the loss of those who fought in military wars for this country, feelings about this day get all mixed up with the military industrial complex a government institution that has a checkered history and has performed many misdeeds. Memorial Day is certainly an emotional holiday for me. I'm proud of my family's military history, but I am distrustful of war. The military created this day to commemorate and lift up our love and demonstrate our respect for those who have served. It also signifies, underlines, underscores, appreciate the sacrifices that those families made. However, for some, this love and respect has not been mutual. Our country has not held everyone equally with love and kindness, nor have they held everyone up in great esteem. For example, last week I mentioned to you the president signing the order that sanctioned the internment of Japanese citizens. But even with that order and that level of disrespect, Japanese people have enlisted and served in the military. Today I told you of the anniversary of Native people land being taken away and the resulting death um, to so many. Yet Native people, Indigenous people, have served in the military. And that is particularly true during conscription in the Vietnam War. Today I mentioned Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the state-sanctioned stealing of black Americans' prosperity, which included black lives. But black men continue to serve. How many of you all know what the Tuskegee experiment is? The Tuskegee experiment lasted between 1932 and 1972. There were 399 black men involved. They were used as test subjects without their knowledge to study syphilis. This is important to note. It was not an experiment. That is, some people didn't get the placebo and other people got the, the, the cure. 
it was an observational study. So they were watched for some 40 years as they suffered the ravages of this disease without treatment. The experiment stopped when a young black man who was living in Atlanta blew the whistle. Now, I met this man, so that's how, so, how recent that was, at a public health conference. And yet, with this history, black men and women still see serving in the military as a viable option. I remember as a kid, campus protests of the Vietnam War wondering why we invaded a country that had not done nothing to us. Hell no, we won't go, was the cry aimed at denouncing conscription and military intervention and the lives of people of another nature, nation. Ironically, just prior to that, I had followed my family's tradition and was scheduled to join the army and become an army nurse. Do you remember the invasion of a country looking for weapons of mass destruction? The awful thing was the military leaders knew that there were no weapons, but they sent troops in. Even now, there is a war where one country has ruthlessly invaded another country, bombing and killing as they can, and the U.S. has sent weapons to help that country defend against that inv invasion. Conversely, at the same time, another war rages. Thousands of, men and, um, thousands of women and children have been massacred. Mass graves have terrified. People are cut off from medical supplies. Man-made famine, and we are sending weapons to the invading country to use against the people who have been invaded. Some say it's genocide. The U.S. has fought other wars held less ambiguously I can't say that, ambiguously, such as the Civil War and the Revolutionary War. The Big War, World War I, resulted in 8.5 million deaths. And then there was World War II, when Hitler invaded Poland, and the U.S. ultimately joined France and Great Britain. This war resulted in more death and destruction than any previous war. Hitler had this paranoid idea about Jews, which drove him to try to commit genocide, killing as many Jews in death camps as he could. But he was not selective. He also killed the infirm, gays, Catholics, anyone on the margin. It is said that, he, that the total was closer to 17 million. War is a narrow part of the military industrial, industrial complex, but it is an important part. To sustain itself, the military offers attractive recruitment packages, which results in a disproportionate number of black and brown people serving. I still have members of my family who enlist in the military. As recently as last year, my cousin joined the Air Force because he wanted to be an air traffic controller, and he couldn't afford the expense of a college education, and the military offered him a great package. I said earlier that I was following in my family's footsteps. I am told my grandfather fought in WW1. He was a cook. He was killed and buried in France later reburied in Arlington Cemetery. A history buff did the research and found him for me. I am told it was one of the few jobs available to black men back then that had any sense, semblance of dignity. And so he joined. My father served in the army. He fought in the Korean War. He was a triple A gunner. I have never met a kinder man I have always wondered what the war he would not talk about did to him. He went into the service because, again, a great package. He wanted to buy his family a home, and so he took advantage of the GI Bill. But there was just something else 
He was buried in a military plot, and I remember the look of pride on my mother's face when they played taps and they did the 21 gun salute. This other side of the military, a military that seems to provide hope. It's a strange relationship. On the one hand, it seems to provide opportunities for people who do not have access to wealth. And on the other hand, it does this because it is involved in the death and destruction business. All of which says something about these United States, this world, and the distribution of wealth. Today, we bring flowers to celebrate lives lost, lives changed by war. I am weighed down by all the wars that continue to rage all over the world. I didn't mention Haiti. I didn't mention Somalia. I didn't mention just anyways. I'm exhausted by what man does to man. It is said that there are many lessons learned from flowers. Lessons like resiliency, mystery, and community. Today, in this flower communion, let us remember the ravages of war here and abroad. But also let us be reminded that there are many different kinds of wars being fighted, fought here in the United States every day. War to save the climate. War to create housing. War to create um, equal quality health care. War to save our children. War to recreate wealth distribution. Today, in this time of turbulence, let us not forget the sacri sacrifices made for us. As we celebrate our flower communi communion, let us remember all, all who have, we have lost to all the wars. Let us come together a community with an open heart and with love. May it be so. Blessed be. things that are about to happen. It is time for the offertory, and it's time for that song that everybody waits to hear. Um,
now can we stand and sing the doxology? in your gray hymnal. Um, it is Come Sing a Song with Me. to do our flower communion now. Um, this, um, and this is going to be sort of in the tradition that um, um, Dr. Chepak um, wrote it. Um, so I'm going to be repeating some of his words. Hence, I'm wearing my traditional garb. On the last Sunday before the summer recess of the Unitarian Church in Prague, all the children and adults participated in this um, colorful, colorful ritual called the Flower Communion, which gives concrete expression to the humanity-affirming principles of our liberal faith. When the Nazis took control of Prague in 1940, they found Dr. Um, Chapik gospel of the inherent worth and beauty of every human person in the world to be as Nazi courts recorded, recorded it, um, too dangerous to the Reich to be allowed to live. Dr. Ch Chapik was then sent to Dachau where he was killed during the next year as a Nazi medical experiment. This gentleman suffered a cruel death. 
His message of human hope and human de decency lives on through this flower communion. It is a noble and meaningful ritual we are about to recreate. I will re repeat his prayers um, and hit remember his principles and the dreams that he had for all of us. Whenever Dr. Chapek conducted his flower communion in Prague, he would say the Proverbs as he consecrated the flowers. And it went like this. Infinite spirit of life. We ask that by blessing on we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversity of knowledge and diversity of gifts to be one in desire and infection and devotion to thy will. May they also remind us of the value of friendship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendships as one of the most precious gifts we could be given. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship. But may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do the work in this world. Susan? Each of us is a flower with a delicate beauty uniquely our own. May we be, we may be like sunflowers turning always toward the light. We may be like night blooming Sirius only displaying our fragrant petals when it is dark and when we think no one can see. We may be hothouse flowers far from our native lands, cautiously tended within a harsh and unfamiliar climate. We may be gray-headed like dandelions, eager to launch the new generation with the first strong gust of wind past our bright youth, but ready to pass our wisdom on in a precious gossamer carried seed. Some of us, sometimes, spring up overnight and fade in a hot glare. Some of us sometimes are roses, slowly assembling petal after tightly wrapped petal and revealing our full glory only when everything is in place. Sometimes we are roadside, roadside weeds, loveliness bursting improbably from the dust and debris. May we offer our beauty with the simplicity of flowers, expecting no recognition, hoping for nothing, giving out of what we are, and knowing it is enough. Now, this is a complicated part. It is time for us to share the flower communion. I ask that each of you take turn and turn and approach the communion vase. Do it quietly and reverently. With a, with a sense of how important it is for each of us to address our world and one another with gentleness, justice, and love. I ask you to select a flower different from the one you brought in, one that particularly speaks to you. As you take your chosen flower, noting its particular shape and beauty, Please remember to handle it carefully. It is a gift. Someone else brought it to you. 
it, re it represents that person's unique human humanity and therefore deserves your, kind your kindness touch. Let us share quietly in this Unitarian Universalist ritual of oneness and love. Again, the communion is shared silently. If you're unable to get here, um, we can bring you the flowers. The ushers will bring you flowers. Um, if you want flowers up there in the choir, let us know. Um, people on Zoom indicate whether you want a flower. We'll try to figure out how to get it to you. Um, let's see. Can I ask um, Chris for you to start? <laughs> 